Students, the next standard form that we are going to see is y is equal to 1 upon ax plus b raised to m. In the previous formula, we have seen 1 upon ax plus b. This time we are going to see 1 upon ax plus b raised to some power m. So let's begin with the standard form. So here we have the function as y is equal to 1 upon ax plus b raised to m. And I want to find its nth derivative. Now students don't you recall the formula that we have learned if y is 1 upon x raised to n then students what is the first derivative the first order derivative y1 becomes equal to minus of n upon x raised to n plus 1. The power increases by 1, isn't it? So you need to remember this particular formula because as I said, we will be using it lot many times. So look at this now. We have y is equal to 1 upon ax plus b raised to m. So I'm going to differentiate both sides with respect to x. So I get y1, isn't it? So 1 upon ax plus b raised to m is like 1 upon x raised to n. You get the negative sign, you get the power n and in the denominator you have to write x raised to 1 power more x raised to n plus 1. So here 1 upon ax plus b raised to m can be written as minus the power m upon ax plus b raised to 1 power more, isn't it? So you get m plus 1, but it is not x, isn't it? It is ax plus b. There is a function of x in place of x. So you need to again differentiate the function of x. So ax plus b will again be differentiated. So derivative of ax plus b is a, isn't it? So let's generalize it over here. I can write this is minus 1 isn't it? I have written minus 1. Then there is a or I can say a raised to 1. Then you have m and upon you get ax plus b raised to m plus 1. So let's call this as the first relation. Now again I am going to differentiate. So again differentiate both sides with respect to x. So what I will be getting this time. So I am going to differentiate again. So y1 now becomes y2 all these terms are constant minus 1 then a raised to 1 then m they are all constants so they remain as it is minus 1 into a into m they are all constants derivative of 1 upon x raised to n is minus n upon x raised to n plus 1 the power increases by 1 so here derivative of 1 upon ax plus b raised to m plus 1 so you write a negative sign isn't it write a negative sign then write the power which is m plus 1 then go to the denominator you write ax plus b raised to whatever power you have you raise it by 1 so m plus 1 and plus 1 so that gives me m plus 2 and again the derivative of ax plus b which is a here isn't it so now students again let's generalize let's try to generalize this i have now two negative signs so minus and minus i'm not going to write it as plus i'm going to write it as minus one square then a and a so a multiplies with a you get a square then you have m into m plus one so i write here m into m plus 1 whole divided by you get ax plus b raised to m plus 2. I'm going to call this as the second relation. I've got y2 now students. Let's get one more derivative y3 and then we will definitely be able to generalize for yn. So again differentiating both sides with respect to x. So I get now y3, isn't it? So the third order derivative now. So all these terms in the numerator are all constants. Minus 1 square, then a square, then m, then m plus 1. They're all constants. So I write here minus 1 square, then a square, then m and m plus 1. They're all constants, isn't it? And now again, you have 1 upon ax plus b raised to m plus 2. Again, it looks like 1 upon ax plus b raised to m plus 2 is like 1 upon x raised to m. So my answer would be minus sign, isn't it? Then the power which is m plus 2 whole divided by you get ax 
plus b raise the power by 1 so m plus 2 plus 1 that becomes m plus 3 but this is not x this is ax plus b so i should be differentiating ax plus b one more time so i get into a so let's again generalize this so you have one more negative sign now you already have two negative signs so it becomes minus 1 cube then a square into a becomes a cube then you have m into m plus 1 into m plus 2 whole divided by ax plus b raised to m plus this is going to be what students sorry for this so what was what was the term m plus yeah it is m plus 3 isn't it it is m plus 3 you get here m plus 3 so that's your third equation so y3 has come minus 1 cube here minus 1 square for y2 for y1 minus 1 raised to 1 then y3 has given me a cube for y2 it is a square for y1 it is a so you are getting it is following a certain pattern then for y1 there is one term for y2 there is two terms for y3 there are three terms and look at the terms it is m m plus 1 m plus 2 m plus 2 is 1 less than 3 then there is m m plus 1 m plus 1 is 1 less than 2 then there is m so you can observe very easily over here that whatever the order is that many terms are there and it's always one less isn't it one less than the order of the derivative and in the denominator you can observe ax plus b raised to what for y3 you are getting m plus 3 for y2 you are getting m plus 2 so is it now possible for us to generalize the terms and you need to understand one very important thing over here look at this this m into m plus 1 into m plus 2 these are ascending numbers they are not descending it is not 3 into 2 into 1 they are ascending m then the next number m plus 1 then the next number m plus 2 so it is ascending up getting or not so now if i say in general i ask you to get the nth derivative is it possible for us to write now the nth derivative so it is definitely possible now i by n is going to be minus 1 cube so i write minus 1 raised to n then a cube can be written as a raised to n isn't it because a cube then a square then a so you get a raised to n this is very important part of the derivation students m then the next number is not m minus 1 it has gone up it has now become m plus 1 again it has gone up it has become m plus 2 it is always one less than whatever the order of the derivative is so here also i get m into m plus 1 into m plus 2 and so on i'll keep on proceeding further and i will be getting what last term here for 3 i've got m plus 2 so for n what i'll be getting i'll be getting m plus for 3 it is 2 1 less for n it is 1 less n minus 1 so m plus n minus 1 isn't it these are the terms that you have got and whole divided by you will be getting ax plus b raised to m plus n now students understand this m into m plus 1 into m plus 2 the numbers are increasing and it has gone up to m plus n minus 1 so my question to you m into m plus 1 into m plus 2 the numbers are increasing it has gone up to m plus n minus 1 is this m plus n minus 1 factorial that's my question m into m plus 1 into m plus 2 so numbers are increasing m m plus 1 m plus 2 and so on up to m plus n minus 1 is it m plus n minus 1 factorial my question students so if your answer is yes students the answer yes is a wrong answer it is not m plus n minus 1 factorial now you got to think about this very properly look at this if i say 6 factorial what do you write 6 factorial as so from 6 it will start descending down or i can say this is 6 into 5 into 4 into 3 into 2 into 1 or you can say 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 so observe very carefully when you say 6 factorial it has to descend down up to 1 what is happening here from m you are proceeding further to m plus n minus 1 so how can it be m factorial or m plus n minus 1 factorial none of the two answers are correct students observe carefully again one more uh, thing so if i say so i write 3 into 4 into 5 into 6 into 7 is this going to be 7 factorial 
So 3 into 4 into 567 is not 7 factor because there are numbers missing over here. You need to have 1 and 2, isn't it? Only then this becomes 7 factorial. So here also, if you want to write m plus n minus 1 factorial, you need to have numbers which are present before m starting from 1. So 1 into 2 into 3 into so on. What is the number just before m? Just before m, the number is m minus 1. Isn't it? Before 7, if I ask you what's the number, it's 7 minus 1. Before 6, what number I ask you? It is 6 minus 1. So before m, who is the number present? It is m minus 1. So students, look at this. Another very important thing. I've got the formula. Y n I have got, but I'm going to uh, simplify it even more further. So therefore, I write y n is equal to minus 1 raised to n, a raised to n and then students observe this thing. I'm going to get some terms over here. So before m, I'm going to write these terms 1 into 2 into 3 into dot 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 till m minus 1. These terms are brought by me in the numerator. That means I will have to adjust these terms in the denominator also. And students, what terms you already have there? You already have m into m plus 1 into m plus 2 into dot 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 m plus n minus 1 and now observe carefully it is 1 into 2 into 3 into dot 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 dot, dot, dot till m plus n minus 1 now this is ascending from 1 up to m plus n minus 1 and obviously in the denominator you need to bring the adjustment that you have uh, uh, brought in the numerator so what's the adjustment that you have brought in the numerator it was 1 into 2 into 3 into m minus 1 and you already had ax plus b raised to m plus n. So students observe carefully. Now all these terms that you can see 1 into 2 into 3 into so on till m plus n minus 1. What is this? This is definitely going to be m plus n minus 1 factorial for sure, isn't it? And likewise students, what is this 1 into 2 into 3 into m minus 1 so on. So this is definitely going to be m minus 1 factorial, isn't it? So 1 into 2 into 3 is still m minus 1. So you get m minus 1 factorial. So that means now you are in a position to write the nth order derivative of 1 upon ax plus b raised to m. So students, the nth order derivative yn is going to be, you can generalize the formula very properly from here now. So it is 1 minus 1 raised to n, the first term, minus 1 raised to n, the next term is going to be a raised to n, the next term 1 into 2 into 3 and so on up to m plus n minus 1. This is m plus n minus 1 factorial whole divided by you have 1 into 2 into 3 and so on up to m minus 1. So this is m minus 1 factorial and obviously the next term ax plus b raised to m plus n. Students, whatever standard formulas that we are deriving over here, all the formulas must be memorized. So previous to this, we have seen 1 upon ax plus b, very important one formula, isn't it? This 1 upon ax plus b raised to m is another very important formula that you need to remember. What is the answer that you have got? The answer has come minus 1 raised to n, a raised to n, m plus n minus 1 factorial upon on m minus 1 factorial ax plus b raised to m plus n. Make sure students that you derive this entire thing one time for yourself also. So that was all about the derivation of 1 upon ax plus b raised to m. Now let's proceed ahead with another standard formula.